What's happening people out in bike land of the interwebs? This is Pete with Backdraft Bike. We're doing a gear review today, people. Woo! Stick around. Hey, I appreciate you supporting the channel. I do have some new merch in. If you want to wear one of these cool shirts and look spiffy while doing it and supporting a good cause, please check out the link in the description for our merchandise. So, like I said, we're doing a gear review today. I've been gearing up for some epic adventures in the springtime. You know, your bike is put away in the winter. Kind of what you only have to do is think about your next trips and get ready for them, right? So, I went out and I purchased a new set of gear. Uh, I purchased the Climb Carlsbad gear. And I've got a couple examples here. We're going to kind of go over a few things. If you're thinking about getting anything from Climb, uh, especially the Carlsbad or the Badlands, which is like the big brother to the Carlsbad, uh, I want to show you what I found about the Carlsbad gear and what I really liked. First things first, climb sizing is slightly different than some of the other mainstream manufacturers out there, including gear branded uh, based on the motorcycle brands. I've had some Harley, some uh, Triumph gear, and... Uh, you know, I, I notice everybody does their gear sizing just a little bit. So my advice to you is to go on climb.com and find the sizing chart and follow that to the letter. One of the biggest things that I wanted to show you is uh, measuring. So get yourself one of these measuring tapes and uh, get some assistance from somebody to measure it. Because if you, chances are you're not going to be able to go into a store and try this stuff on. So you're going to be ordering it through the mail and you want to save yourself a little bit of aggravation and get the right stuff first. Uh, one of uh, the things I found on like Revzilla is that they had a sizing chart and they wanted you to measure uh, across the, the clavicle or collarbone down your arm uh, in a bent position to get your sleeve length. With the uh, climb gear, I noticed most of the arm length was appropriately sized. And I'm a big guy. I'm six foot four. Uh, and I have pretty janky arms. So I found that most of these uh, arm lengths on the large XL and up seem to be the same distance. Uh, so there really wasn't much of a different, different uh, between the sizes. One thing I did notice uh, that does make a difference, and I'm kind of going down a rabbit hole on arm length, but you're able to cinch up uh, on your uh, forearms so if it is a little too long, understand you can pull that back a little bit by cinching and the Velcro wrist, wrist closures. I'll show you once we put it on. A very important measurement that they do want you to do is to measure the fullest part of your chest, typically right across your breastbone. And you're going to want to go, you know, in, underneath your armpits. And you'll want this measurement to be parallel with the floor to get the full measurement. Climb suggests, per their technical support advisors, which, by the way, are fantastic if you call them, uh, they want this to be kind of a loose fit. They don't want it to be super snug. Uh, and so that came, that came out to me about 47. What they end up doing when you call, if you have your measurements, is they're going to convert it to uh, the sizing chart that they use, which is a little unorthodox, in my opinion. I didn't see the same sizing uh, that I had seen in some of the other manufacturers. Why don't we try one of these jackets on and I'll go over what I really liked about it and give you my honest feedback. So I have the Carlsbad with the Sage slash High Viz color scheme. I really like the way it looks. I love the olive drab look. I, I'm not a huge fan of mainstream colors and I don't need to stand out like a sore thumb. So I kind of like the camo color scheme that this offers. And the High Viz uh, zippers are a nice color accent uh, to kind of really offset the uh, just the drab look. So it kind of makes it pop a little bit. I also have a set of the pants. I absolutely love them. I'll talk about them in just a second. Climb sends you a pretty nice package. They give you a, a, a coat hanger, a bunch of stickers and such. And uh, just kind of want to go over the sizing. So again, I'm six foot four, 240 pounds, pretty big guy. Uh, and I found this is the double XL size for what it's worth. I found that this jacket was slightly large in the torso section, but very good on the arm length and the length uh, down around my waist. Uh, Climb's got some pretty high quality stuff. Uh, I really like their zipper poles. Their zippers are high quality YKK zippers. 
The main zipper on this compartment zips right up to the neck strap. And then you have this uh, rather interesting setup for the uh, Velcro closure or the rain flap, if you will. They actually sew like a little fringe thing down and then you do this. So basically when you're riding, if you think about it, water is going to try to come in, but it's going to hit this little rain gutter, right? So that's pretty ingenious. Uh, if you're riding through rain, you don't want that. Now these are fully uh, Gore-Tex. This is a single layer Gore-Tex system. So you don't have to mess around with liners. It's super annoying when you're riding along and it starts to rain and you have to pull over, put a rain liner on and then start driving again. Uh, because what ends up happening is the actual jacket itself ends up getting soaking wet and a lot heavier. And if you're riding in cold conditions, it's actually gonna end up freezing. Uh, whereas if you have Gore-Tex built into the outside of the jacket, your shell is actually what is uh, repelling the water. So you don't have to mess with the liner and it's a better level of protection. Uh, on the jacket itself, the wrists have waterproof zippers with uh, integral air vent. So literally when you're riding, if it's hot out and you have these zipped down, you can cinch up the uh, wrist with the Velcro and then you can actually pop this down, right? And now you've got venting in the arms, which is fantastic when you're riding and it's hot out. Uh, and then if it's cool, obviously you can zip it up and the zipper even tucks over with a little bit of a rain guard over that as well. There's a, a stat pocket as they call it, the ID pocket, where you can put your medical information in. I think that's kind of synonymous with a lot of the climb gear. And uh, I like the uh, arm adjustment here. This really cinches up. There's quite a bit of flapper going down that, that you can take out with uh, a simple adjustment of this. And again, when this is tight on your wrist, it's going to keep it from riding down your hand when you have gloves on, okay? Um, this is all, I believe it's Cordero, cor how do you say it? Cordero fabric. It's ripstop. Uh, essential ripstop canvas, if you will. Uh, I'm, I'm butchering this whole description of the fabric, but uh, it's rugged material. This is an ADV jacket. It's meant to get scratched and dirty. So that being said, it is a little stiffer than uh, some of your textile jackets that you might be used to. I will tell you this on the Carlsbad though, this jacket is very light compared to some of the other jackets I've had. Joe Rocket, uh, I had a Harley branded Revit rebadge re jacket as well for my Pan America. You can see me riding that in some of my videos. Uh, that jacket you put on, it felt like you had just put like a ballistic vest on. This jacket is very light, it's very easy, and it has all the built-in armor. Speaking of armor, I believe it's level two. You've got it in your uh, elbows, and you also have an integrated and included back protector. You don't have to buy that extra, it comes right with the jacket. And there is an option to buy the kidney belt for this, which I'm told cinches up the abdomen area. One thing I'm not keen on this with this jacket is that there is no cinch for the midline. So a lot of jackets will put uh, some cinches in this area to hold this tighter to your body. I like a tight fitting motorcycle jacket, not only because I've been to motorcycle accidents and when you have loose gear, it usually leaves the premises as soon as you touch the bike down, um, but the other thing is that when you're riding and you have really loose gear, you get the flap effect, right? Almost like Superman's cape. And what you'll end up having is you'll end up having, um, especially if you have vents open on a jacket, quite a bit of buffeting. It's quite uncomfortable. When you get a lot of buffeting in your jacket because it's not fitting you tightly, the jacket oftentimes will ride up your torso when you're on the motorcycle. And uh, that lends for a very uncomfortable ride. The other thing I noticed that Climb does is they use Velcro, and they do this on most of their uh, jackets. They use Velcro closures, even for uh, the chin area. Uh, I, I think that's nice because with a snap, when you're dealing with gloves with a snap, it's kind of hard sometimes to find the sweet spot to get it to click in. Uh, with Velcro, you just kind of aim for the right area and you're done, sort of like a grenade. Uh, this jacket has uh, a few other features I really like about it is it does have pockets. The pockets have an integrated snap, as you can see here. And uh, these pockets are nice for warming up your hands, obviously, uh, if you're stopped somewhere. Uh, and then on top of that, these also have a Velcro closure pocket. And this pocket is rather large. Like, I put my gloves right in this pocket. You could probably put um, 
your phone or even a small iPad uh, or maybe even a, a baby chipmunk. The only problem with these pockets though is that there really isn't a lot of rain protection to them. Meaning when you open this up, this is open. So if you're riding and you think like a water droplet, there's a good possibility you're gonna get water in these pockets. So I would not call these pockets waterproof by any stretch of the imagination, but that's okay. Uh, because you can put a lot of stuff in these pockets for the ADV ride that could get wet. Um, you also have vents up here. And uh, this is a ventilated pocket. You can see the mesh. But this is also a pocket that could store some gear. But it also acts as a vent. You have your Beam Me Up Scotty pocket where people put the uh, transponders in or a radio. Um, I think this is a great pocket for maybe some camera gear if you're out filming. Uh, because it's nice quick access. There's also another pocket right here Again, not a waterproof pocket not a waterproof zipper uh, But very nice and integrated and there's also a clip on here uh, if you wanted to uh, Tether something in there, you know, perhaps like a key card or, or something similar to that There are a few other things that are kind of nice about this jacket. So climb puts these little bungee loops in so I kind of struggled a little bit the first time I did it, but once you get used to it, it's pretty good. You can hook both elements to these clips. And you can ride like this and the jacket's going to be going to be still on your body. Uh, that gives you some nice airflow in a warm environment, obviously. Speaking of airflow as well, there are two zips on the back. Uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, so that's going to give you your cross ventilation that you like in a jacket. Once I open this up, uh, you'll see that there is a pocket in here. And this is behind the iron curtain of Gore-Tex. So I, put, I found myself using this for my cell phone because it's waterproof and it's going to be stored away. There's also a, another pocket right here that, again, is behind the Gore-Tex shell. So this is a very large pocket with a lot of area. There's another pocket right here that has no zipper on it. And there's another pocket right here. So all in all, a lot of pockets. I kind of like the ability to have everything separated in my jacket. Uh, kidney belt obviously would attach inside. Cordura is the name of the fabric. That's what it is. All right. On the very bottom of the jacket, you do have some uh, shock cord uh, cinchers, so you can cinch up the actual waistline. Uh, you're going to want that to be tight around your your pants if you're riding and it's wet, because you don't obviously you don't want the water to shed and curl and come back in. This will also reduce the flapping effect uh, if the jacket is a little bit uh, on the larger side. Now, speaking of sizing, what's interesting about this uh, jacket again is the arms. On, on the jackets are kind of size the same. However, the midriff area, the torso on the jackets varies quite a bit. So this is a double XL. And while I think that this jacket fits me rather well, um, I noticed riding, sitting seated down, the collar would come up into my uh, thorax area, right into my Adam's apple. And it was rather uncomfortable. So a quick call to climb. They explained to me that this type of fabric is stiff. Um, it should soften up a little bit, but this is an adventure jacket and this is made for getting up and standing when you're riding and having some abrasion resistance. Um, that being said, I mean, to each his own, but these jackets are very rugged. They're a little bit lighter than the Badlands jacket. So they provide a good amount of uh, protection from abrasion and branches and mud and whatever, um, but they're, possibly not your go-to for long distance touring. You may want to consider another style jacket for that. And in that aspect, because we're in a cooler climate up here in Maine, uh, the Kodiak is what they recommended. Now, speaking of sizing, the good folks at MotorcycleGear.com are excellent to deal with. I'm not being paid to say this. This is just where I bought this jacket from. They had some of these on closeout, so I bought the Double XL. The double-edged sword for ordering things on the internet is you don't get to try it on first. So after I bought this jacket, I was a little bit let down because there was so much width in the chest. Let me show you. So according to the climb sizing chart that I used to order this jacket, I was right between an XL and a double XL. 
My other gear is all double XL, so I figured I'll go the safe route. And I'm always going to be wearing typically a jacket underneath this, some sort of, you know, job shirt or whatever, just to keep the temperatures uh, somewhat okay. But I was really surprised at how much room this jacket had in it from an XL. So, I mean, that's, that's probably a good six inch difference between what is where this jacket fits. Now, do you want this thing to be super skin tight when you're riding? Kind of. You do want it to be tight. In an off-road situation, you want to be able to move your body. But if you have something that's really loose, your body's going to move underneath it. Um, if it's really tight, your body's going to move with it. So that sometimes can restrict your movements if it's too loose. Uh, if it's too tight, rather, it'll restrict your movements. But if it's too loose and you crash, this thing is going to ride up and it's not going to do its job. So with the pants that I ordered, these do have an integrated zipper system in it. And you can easily zip the pants in, no questions asked. And that's, and that's great, and I plan on doing that. But sometimes you don't ride with your pants, right? If you're just going for a rip down the street, you do want your jacket on. Too loose like this could really be catastrophic. The other thing I just want to mention about sizing is notice where this sits on my hips, okay? Notice where this sits on my hips. Just keep this in mind. This is the double XL and I'm 6'4". Let's put on the large and I'll show you what I mean. So before I get into anything on the sizing on this, notice where this sits on me now. It's a little shorter. Uh, however, I feel that the fit of this jacket is better because it's not as loose. And again, I do not want a loose jacket. I want this jacket to fit like second skin. So if you look at the sizing now on this, I might have an inch to two inches of play uh, in my jacket area and I'm going to be wearing a sweatshirt underneath this so it's going to fit pretty snug. I kind of like this better. I kind of like this better. Um, I will say though that uh, as far as the fitment goes on both of these jackets, the XL has better reach to cover my uh, hip area and when you're riding and it's soaking wet. You kind of want a little overlap between your pants and your jacket, or you'll have water going in between. Getting back to my friends at MotorcycleGear.com, they're super good. Their return policy is awesome. They give you a flat shipping fee. They kind of eat half the cost of it to return an item if it doesn't fit. And they're being super good with me and allowed me to order a secondary jacket just to try it on uh, and to make sure that I have the right fit. So I think XL is better, but I definitely need the tall size to cover over uh, my hips where I'm wearing my pants. These will still zip into the pants, so I think you could wear them in a pinch. Just wearing these by itself, it wouldn't be good. And this jacket is pretty tight on me, so it isn't gonna ride up too much uh, when I'm riding. What is it like when you're assuming the position? Again, you've got really good protection. Your armor's here. Everything is, is, is fitting nicely. And again, I can cinch these up really well uh, in order to ride safer. So what do I think about riding on these jackets? I can't show you right now because it's zero degrees outside, but we did have a break in the action and I was able to demo one of the Carl's Badge jackets for about 250 miles. I do have to say my experience with the jacket, it was a little on the cold side. The jacket performed flawlessly with a sweatshirt on underneath. Uh, I, at no time did I feel like I was restricted and uh, did I feel that the jacket wasn't doing its job. I also wore the jacket around and walked around uh, a Walmart for about 35 minutes or so just to get a feel in a hotter environment what it would feel like. And the jacket did a good job breathing, but I did find myself unzipping a little bit. And that's probably due to my sweatshirt that I was wearing as well. I would say this is a pretty solid three season jacket. The colors look good. Uh, we know Klein makes top notch gear. so. The jacket will service you for a long time. Climb's warranty is also really good. In fact, if you get into an accident uh, and it's been damaged, I believe within five years, one of these tags says it, um, and you send them a copy of the police report, they'll actually uh, fix your gear for you or replace it. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, if you have a Climb jacket, I'd like to hear your experiences and what brand you have. Uh, and if there's a brand you want me to try to demo, shoot me a message and let me know so I can uh, do that for you. As always, Ride safe out there, and until next time, be good.